Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, I mean, guys are coming off of a 57 game win season, and if we understand uh, what we have in front of us. I think the biggest challenge is everyone keeps talking about how we've beaten them eight games in a row. And as I told our players today, Adam, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, this is a, a, a different team, a different series, and uh, we know that what we have in front of us is going to be a hell of a challenge uh, to beat the Lakers again in the in the playoffs. How was the uh, coaching staff gathering to watch that game? Oh, it was good. Yeah, we ordered some uh, blue pan pizza. Um, Got to give them a shout out. They always take care of us. And uh, yeah, we were able to watch the game and meet and discuss after the game and put together the playoff books, the personnel, and put forth the schedule for the week in preparation for game one on Saturday night. We have the, the soon-to-be three-time MVP inviting the team over to have that sense of community and, and brotherhood for the playoffs. What does that say both about his leadership and the camaraderie? Yeah, I mean, a very connected group, uh, and that's, it's not just, you know, last night, our guys are always getting together uh, at home, on the road, uh, breaking bread, uh, and, I, and I think that can only help you on the court, you know, being a team that um, is always, you know, not just playing with each other, but playing for each other, and a real family, and we always talk about family, and uh, Nicola doing that last night is just another example of him uh, trying to uh, continue to, to build that more and more. You mentioned beating the Lakers. It's a different team. Even in the game, you beat them every game of the What was the difference that was from Well, I mean, for two years now, we've been one of the best clutch teams in the NBA. Uh, you know, this year, obviously, I think we finished second in clutch defense, and we were third in clutch offense, which was uh, an improvement from last year. Um, so I, I think when the game is tight, in the fourth quarter, our guys are very comfortable and confident in what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, we, we seem to be able to step up and make the right play and make big shots while also getting big, big stops and big rebounds. So, um, yeah, but they're, they've won, I think they're 12 and three in the last 15 games. Um, and it's going to start in transition. They're elite in transition. You saw that last night in New Orleans. Uh, and it starts with LeBron, hell of a, a transition player. Uh, and then the paint, they also dominate in the paint. And uh, that, that's going to be where this series is won or lost. Can you slow them down in transition? And can you keep them out of the paint? George, you said they know it doesn't matter. But how much does it at least give you a leg up from a scouting standpoint that your guys are used to preparing for them? Your coaches have put together a bunch of game plans against you know, mostly similar personnel. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, again, we, we played them a lot. Obviously, uh, Western Conference Finals three times this year. Uh, so there's definitely familiarity. We know them, they know us, and uh, we know what to expect. And, and that's why today is you go through some of the personnel, some of the plays, but more important than that, like transition is not a play call. Uh, driving Anthony Davis rolling to the rim, where he's one of the best in terms of rolling and, and points to the roller, uh, that's just, you know, those are themes that we have to make sure that we are showing tremendous discipline throughout. And uh, our guys have a good feel for them, but. You know, come Saturday night at 6.30, uh, it's not about talking about it, it's about going out there and doing it. How comfortable are you with where Jamal's at physically? Yeah, comfortable. You know, it was uh, it was great for him to get through the, uh, the regular season, and we were smart about it, you know, towards the, the end there, not overdoing it, not playing him too many minutes, but uh, not playing to Saturday night allows him to uh, be in a better place come game one. And, uh, you know, Jamal's a warrior, he'll be ready to go. So Wes Sutton saw Junior here today, what did, what did you know, what was it like having him around and, and what did he provide? Yeah, I don't even know why he's here. <laughs> um, no, Wes is a, is a dear friend, as you guys know, and was a, a big part of um, not just while he was here, but even after he left, helping build this foundation. And, uh, you know, I've been in that situation before. So, um, and Wes doesn't know this, but his wife actually called me up and said, could you invite Wes out to get him out of the house? Yeah. Because I think she's had enough of him. Um, but... I want him to be here and also to offer his insights. I trust him and he's got a great basketball mind. And what was really neat was when he walked through the locker room you know, yesterday and guys like Nicola and Jamal and Aaron, the guys that know him, see him and you can see how happy they were. So I'm really happy that he's here and um, you know, thankful for the opportunity to reconnect with him. Obviously it can be kind of circumstantial, but where are you at in terms of figuring out how deep into your bench you feel like you can go or want to go with, with this matchup. Yeah, we'll go as deep as we need. How can you feel the focus and intensity turn up now that it's playoff time and go time? Like, can you describe what that feels like around this 
Uh, I really can't. You know, I mean, it's like a feeling, you know, deep down inside. Uh, so how do you describe that? Uh, no, I think more importantly, like we have a veteran group. And as I told them, like when the play-ins are done, there's 16 teams in the postseason. And there's 15 teams trying to take what we have. We have to understand that. Like this is not going into round one, game one. They're like, there's, there's a bullseye on our back even more so now. Like the, the league's been cut in half almost. And uh, we have a responsibility to understand that. The LA is, we, we swept them last year. We swept them this year. They're coming in, not only playing well, but really hungry. And they want to flip that script. And, and we have to understand that, Katie, and, uh, and bring that. And I think our players do. Uh, but that was our message today, man. Don't, don't let anybody in these playoffs take what we worked so hard to get. There hasn't been a back-to-back -back champion since 17, 18 in Golden State. And it's going to be a hell of a challenge. Uh, I've said this uh, for, for months now. The Western Conference playoffs are going to be insane. Uh, forget seeding. The, the number in front of each team, throw that out the window. There's going to be eight really talented teams. Uh, and there's a number of teams that, that I think, you know, wouldn't be surprised coming out of the West because that's how deep and talented it is. How big of a deal was it that MPJ was able to play and stay healthy? You know, 81 of 82. I don't uh, know if that's, that's been incredible. talked about as much. Oh, no, we talk about it all the time. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I told Michael he deserves so much credit. You know, um, the reason he dropped to us on draft night because there were concerns about his health and his back. And for him to get to this point where he's playing 81 of 82 games and playing at a high level is just uh, incredible. And, uh, you know, he's got a tremendous family. He has tremendous faith. And uh, I couldn't be happier for him because it has not been an easy road for him. When you talk about that, yeah, he's obviously dealt with stuff with his other, you know, his brother before, and now he's got stuff with Jonte. Do you have to have a conversation with him on the side just to check in with him? No, I mean, uh, he knows that we all support him. And uh, his family is such a, a well-connected, strong family uh, with tremendous faith from his mom and dad throughout. Um, and he knows he has another family here at Ball Arena in that locker room and the coaching staff and the entire uh, franchise that have his back. But has not been easy for him. That's why I give him credit because he's carrying so much in his heart and in his mind. And for him to go out there and do the job that he's doing, is uh, it speaks to how much strength uh, that young man has. Well, we just talked to Peyton Watson. He's obviously got a, a different role this year, so I guess how exciting is it to see a young player that's you know come on the way he has? Well, it, it really exciting. And you know, the regular season is one thing, and then the playoffs is a completely different animal. So I'm excited to see you know how Peyton handles that, goes out there, and, um, and that's what you want. You want to see how guys react to the world's biggest stage. Peyton's been really important for us this whole year. What he brings, and young players like him and Christian going out there and their energy, their defense, uh, their urgency. Um, you know, I think Peyton Watson's going to have a hell of a playoffs, and that's only going to help him as we move forward. Uh, because this year was an important year for us, not only for the wins and everything we accomplished, but also for the, the continued development of all of our young players. And, uh, and Peyton, I think, is a great example of that. Thanks, Thanks Mr.